missing. One economy of the size of Germany will have to disappear every year from this planet because there is no energy for this economic activity. Um, you can imagine that this is 100 nuclear power plants that you need to build every year. It takes maybe 10 years to build one. We need to build 100 in one year. And there you see that nuclear, even, even from that point of view, will never be able to have any impact. And I'll go into nuclear a little bit more later. We're talking about 30 million hectares of forestry that you would need to substitute the oil if it would be just heating. This is the entire forest area of Germany to supply the oil for Germany. So you would have no wood for anything else. And it would be 100 million hectares, so this is six times the agricultural space of Germany to provide the plant oil to substitute the crude oil that we are consuming. So just from these comparisons, you see it is a lot of energy and there is no simple answer. This is huge. This is a huge problem. Some arguments, and especially in the newspapers, always say we will expand the reserves. And the reserves, because of new technology, have been expanded and therefore the reach of oil will be 30 to 40 years. This is what you hear all the time. Now I will try to show you what that means in a picture. This is the biggest oil field of the United States, Prudhoe Bay in Alaska. And the red dotted line is the production profile that was predicted in 1977 when they started to produce the oil from Prudhoe Bay. And the green area shows you the oil that they actually did produce and that they predict they will produce. Now it is a very simple fact and you can see it with your own eyes. The green area is bigger than the red area. In terms of journalism, this would mean the reserves have been expanded. But, the very important thing, after the year 1990, production started to collapse and even the expansion of the reserves had no, not a single impact on the fact that production did collapse. What it only means is that the collapse did not happen as fast as it was predicted, but still it is a collapse. So you should never, never make the mistake and think that expanding of reserves has a direct link to daily available oil production. It is a look into the future, but not into today. So this does not work. You cannot expand the reserves in old oil fields and think that this will have any impact then we often see, and this is all over the world, we often see mainly economists that say, yes, but there are those unconventional oils, not the conventional ones. The tar sands in Alberta, Canada, or the huge amount of oil in the Orinoco Delta in Venezuela. These reserves, again, these reserves are so huge that we will have oil for the next, you know, thousand years. But to give you a very simple comparison, what we are talking about. On the left side, you see the picture of conventional oil. On, on the right hand side, you see unconventional oil. On the left hand side, you have an oil reserve. If you punch it, if you make a hole into it, you will have a problem to keep the oil in the ground. This is the biggest problem today. You have oil fields that are under such high pressure that nobody knows how to produce them. And on the right hand side, you see the oil in unconventional reserves. You have to cook the ground for many years in order to get it liquid that you can somehow get it out of the ground. You have to move incredible amounts of mass, of sand, of, of, of dirt, and cook out the oil from that. Half of the energy is just needed to extract the energy. This process is so energy intensive, water intensive, hydrogen intensive, you need to upgrade the oil. This process is so complicated that it is not comparable 
to conventional oil. No way. So this is way too slow. No impact. And we had a report in the year 2007 from the American Petroleum Council, which is the oil industry of the United States. This is not some green fanatics club that is just drawing some nice pictures. This is the oil industry. And inside this study, and that's with every study, the truth is always in there. You only need to read it. It's never in plain language. It's always hidden for those that know how to read it. And I will show you one of the key pictures. This is from the, the summary, kind of the final picture. It's the future of the oil production. And if you look at it, and if you don't have the time to read it, you will say, what is this guy talking about? I don't see a problem. Production will continue to rise. Steady growth. So now if you are not active in marketing, there's something you can learn from this slide. And I will read it to you because you cannot read it from the back. The blue area here is existing reserves. So this is the existing production. And here you get just a glimpse about what 8% production decline means. And that is the industry standard. This is the production decline at 8%. It's virtually a collapse. It goes so fast that you don't know how to react as a society to this event. Now, we have some oil fields that we know because we found them 10 to 50 years ago. They were too complicated, too expensive, but now we will produce them. And if we will produce everything, and here again it is a low probability that this will happen because in this economic situation where there is no money for these projects, and these are the expensive projects because we didn't do them in the past because they were too expensive, then this is a very optimistic scenario. And you see that if we do the optimistic scenario, even the oil industry says, we will not be able to grow. We will have a, a slow, but we will have a decline. Then they write here, this is the enhanced oil recovery. So this is a little bit, you know, sucking harder and pressing harder. Many experts doubt that this will really uh, materialize because all the technology is known. But even if that would happen, you see, we get a plateau, no growth. The orange, the orange are those incredibly huge amounts of oil in unconventional